the 149th seat against Livy Florin. A um, little bit about my background. I moved to Greenwich in 1992 to put my kids through the Greenwich public school system, um, which both of them graduated from Greenwich High School and went on to do great things and do well. One's in college still, one's already out of college. So I've been around for a long time. I was on the RTM for five years. Uh, Frank and I have something in common, the number 36. Yes. I ran against Nickerson in 2004 for the 36. Frank was the next guy to run 12 years later. In 1994, Frank ran 12 years later in 2006. So I've done this before. It's a little bit different now. There was no public financing um, law then, so it kind of it's, it adds a little bit of a twist. Um, Nancy said it, we're up here, it's kind of like, I hate dialing for dollars, but it kind of almost is that. Uh, my campaign filed our first report on through June 30th. We're already up there if anybody wants to check. Uh, my numbers, I have a 32 out of the 150 in district, which for me is defined as Greenwich and Stamford, because the district kind of runs like this. So I have 32 out of 150, so I need those $5 contributions. There are 100 forms here. Um, Len has 60, Frank has 40. There's a form and there's also a little um, a sticky so you can just slap it on an envelope and send it in. Um, and on the money thing, I'm about 40% there, but I figure once I qualify, then I'll go to my friends and I'll press them all for the bigger <laughs> box. So if you guys can come through with the smaller box, that's appreciated. Uh, I'm running because I don't believe that anybody should run unopposed. Uh, and there have been too many times in Greenwich when all these Republicans ran unopposed. Uh, we need to challenge them, challenge their record, make them squirm a little bit. Um, and they do squirm, even though the odds are still in their favor. I'm sure they're squirming a little bit, um, which is a good thing. And I just believe in the Democratic laws. I believe in the town. And really the way things are now, with the Democratic majority in Hartford, Greenwich really does not have representation. I think that's going to be a big point for all of us because the Democrats in Hartford are not going to listen to these reps and the state senator from Greenwich. So if we can get somebody elected from here on the Democratic ticket, I think it's tremendous. The history goes back longer than Nancy's. The last time a representative was elected from Greenwich was 98 years ago in 1912. So it's kind of time to make a change. Let's do it. So anyway, thank you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, and I'm going to step down to George. The big and now, why we're here? Thank you. He doesn't even need to get on the dock. I'm not going to say there's no way I can. Just watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather. You could step, step back into little, that yeah, sharp. Yeah. Jump yeah. forward. George is <laughs> George is <laughs> George is going to be the only guy not squinting into the camera. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm going to be brief because I don't want to uh, come between you guys and the uh, the chili cook off. Uh, being a carnivore, Lynn, I got bad news for you. Uh, <laughs> my selection. Uh, whatever LeBron James is going to say tonight, uh, and uh, I haven't spoken to him recently, so I don't know. Uh, but it's only the second most important announcement of the evening, which is, uh, and, and as Frank already mentioned, tonight's fundraiser will put me over the top in terms of qualifying for uh, public financing. It's, it's really important. And, uh, <laughs> and making this possible because uh, it really does take the special interest money out of politics and uh, speaking more parochially uh, what it means for me is that for the next uh, four months or a little bit less than four months uh, I am freed up from dialing for dollars and and, uh, and and doing fundraising events and I can just campaign full time and reach out to voters directly so it's a it's a really a watershed evening for me so uh, suck on that, LeBron. You know. <laughs> um, but thank you. I want to. I just want to uh, reiterate uh, what has been said about where the other candidates for for, for uh, the legislature and Nancy and Howard. There's no district in Connecticut, especially at this end of the state, that it may have been historically Republican, but there's no district that can't be won by a Democrat today. I, I, I watch these things. I kind of. Obsess on them a little bit, but the the, Democrat, the demographics nationally are moving against the Democrats in some places, like South Carolina, but very much in favor of Democrats with a broader message in places uh, like Southwestern Connecticut, where voters, uh, Republicans, and unaffiliated 
reject the national Republican model, uh, the Sarah Palin model, the, the teabag model, uh, and they are coming our way. If I recall correctly, Barack Obama took Greenwich, and, and uh, he took almost every town in southwestern Pennsylvania. Towns that, that if, 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 when I was growing up in Greenwich, and I'm a proud class of 72 at Greenwich High School, if you had said to me back then, which is why I moved to Stanford, I couldn't get elected to anything in Greenwich, if you had said to me that in not too many years, uh, you know, in, in 30 years, a uh, Greenwich would vote for an African American over a so called moderate war hero Republican, you would have laughed. It was just inconceivable. But what's happened is that, is that first of all, Democrats have proved that they can be fiscally responsible at the local level and the state level at least as much as Republicans. And secondly, the national Republican message simply does not resonate down here. And so, uh, for Nancy and Howard, uh, you can win, and I strongly encourage you to, to donate and make it possible for them to get the public financing that will free them up to campaign full time. Thanks, George. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, George. Nancy worked with my wife, Diana, at GE Capital, so there's a, 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 a special a bond there. And then connection. Howard and I ran together in 1994, was it? You yep. mentioned? Yeah. Yep. So, yep. so these are very special people and very deserving of your support. Very briefly, you know, I'm running for for Attorney General because this Karen. it's the best platform in state government from which to fight uh, for the issues that I care about and, that, and that those issues I think reflect the values of the people here in this room. And I have a, a record from my years in the Connecticut State Legislature and my fight, political fights outside of the legislature of fighting for the issues that we, we care about, whether it's you know, consumer issues, civil rights, uh, domestic violence, protecting a woman's right to choose, including uh, I was the sponsor of of Connecticut's codification of Roe versus Wade, which we're the only state in the nation to have adopted the Roe standard as Connecticut's law. Uh, gun safety, including the ban on assault weapons, uh, which will now be challenged, I think, with the new Supreme Court ruling. Uh, HMO reform, living wills and end of life issues, clean air, clean water, open space preservation, which is a, a special passion of mine, uh, uh, ethical government. These are all issues that I've been a fighter for throughout my years in, in government and politics. And uh, frequently I work with Dick Blumenthal on, on many of these issues. Uh, and it'll be my opportunity to, to fight for them once again as Attorney General. Uh, outside of the legislative process, I've been involved in a lot of tough political fights. I took on John Rowland when he was at the height of his personal popularity on issues of ethics and steering contracts. We actually identified how he was steering the contracts and issues that uh, eventually led to his um, uh, being forced out of state government. I exposed the uh, Enron CRA scandal, which didn't affect this end of the state, but at the time, upstate it affected dozens of communities. It was the largest loss of taxpayer dollars in Connecticut history. Uh, you know, most recently, I was part of a pro bono legal team that successfully fought uh, Jody Rell and the Connecticut legislature from looting, is trying to balance the budget, uh, looting the client security fund, which is the fund through which victims of, of uh, uh, unscrupulous lawyers are compensated for, for uh, their losses. Uh, you know, so I've had uh, most recent, in, in 2006, when I chaired Ned Lamont's campaign for U.S. Senate, I was the only Democrat with a statewide profile who dared to stand up to Joe Lieberman and, and support Ned in that, what I knew would be a very difficult primary and even harder general election. So I'm, I'm not afraid of political fights. I don't win them all, but I've never walked away from a fight that was worth having. And that's, that's the spirit I'm going to bring to being Attorney General. Uh, I'm going to be an Attorney General who's, who tries to be fair, an Attorney General whose uh, door is open and who uh, listens to all sides of an issue before weighing in on it. And uh, perhaps most importantly, an, an Attorney General who understands that, uh, that the power of that office, if it's misdirected, can wreck the life of an innocent individual or an honest business. So I'm going to work very hard to make sure I get my facts right and the law right before I, I, I act on anything. So, uh, that's why I'm, I'm here. Uh, that's why I'm running. I, I feel very good about the race. Uh, I had a little luck on the way uh, back in May with a compliant and friendly Supreme Court. Uh, <laughs> but as my father always said, I'd rather be lucky than good. Uh, so it means I don't have a, a Democratic primary. But uh, I feel very good about my chances as a Democrat. I'll run well in the Greenwich to Fairfield to Danbury Triangle, uh, which is where the most Republican votes are. And uh, it's very difficult to beat a, uh, a Democrat who's going to run well in that part of the, uh, of the state. In addition, uh, I will 